Okay, so in this unit, we're now going to be exploring various action research um, approaches to developing policies that support the implementation of our technologies into an education organization. Now, in this session, we're going to be looking at the power of policy to affect change and some of the some of the ways we can actually make significant changes within our educational organizations through not just the educational technology, but all the other associated aspects that may be related to that technology. And we'll explore a range of different initiatives that can be put into place in educational organizations that have the potential to transform those organizations. And in terms of your next uh, portfolio item, we're going to be looking at the development of vision statements and goal statements, um, setting out what you want to achieve through your transformation process and why it's important to set those visions and to have them articulated and ideally have them developed through a consensus approach. So to start things off, we're going to be in our tutorial looking at the transformation you want to achieve and the vision you have for your organization and the goals related to that. So that's where we're going to be focusing our discussions. And to prepare for that, there's some readings for you to explore. And the first of these is the Roadmap for 21st Century Learning Environments. And this breaks down five different areas of an organization, an educational organization, that have the potential for significant transformation. The learning processes, the teaching and professional learning processes, the assessment and accountability processes, the leadership and cultural processes, and the infrastructure available to support these various processes. <coughs> so the first of these is around the learning processes. And the thing to note is that they are staged. When you come to develop a transformation in your organization, it's often best to have a series of stages that will be that the transformation will go through. Of course, going from pretty much nothing to a really, really transformative environment in one step is very difficult. Um, it can also have multiple phases and multiple elements that will happen at different phases. So breaking it up into different phases or stages is a very important aspect of any significant transformation plan. And these different strategies and outcomes are described in three phases, planning, building and transformative. So planning may be the initial stages that your transformation plan will go through, maybe in its first year. Then it'll move through a building phase and then eventually to the transformative phase of what you want to see achieved. And there are various elements, in this case related to student learning, um, such as student agency. That's an aspect that is transformed in many organizations. Um, engagement levels, the rigorous nature of their learning, the depth and breadth, and a number of other elements that you're going to explore in the reading. So have a look at that and come to the tutorial with an idea of the sorts of things that you would like to see transformed in your educational organization related to learning. But it's not the only aspect. Another aspect you might want to see transformed is related to the teaching processes. And for the professional learning, the learning of the staff and the, and the um, educators within the organization. Um, but again, that may go through various stages. Um, the pedagogy, the approaches they take to teaching, what they teach, the content, um, how they would describe themselves as educators may transform. Do they see themselves as teachers or guides or mentors? That can have an impact upon the culture and the transformation of learning um, that might occur within an organization. And again, there are a number of others as well to look at in the readings. Then there's assessment and accountability. Again, a number of different issues related to this, but one of them is around the tools we use for assessment, measuring, um, learning. 
So that may, again, may be transformative through the educational technologies that you introduce. Then there's leadership and culture, which can have a big effect on whether or not a transformation is achieved or not within an organization. Last week, we looked at distributed leadership as one of the transformation processes. Having um, a number of key people having a say in any decisions being made rather than relying upon one or a small number of people making these decisions. How the community as a whole is supportive of one another. And there are a range again of other different key factors that need to be considered in our transformation planning. So within the context of your educational technology, you should be seeing that it's going to impact upon a range of other aspects within your organization. And how can you build in to your transformation plan impacts upon these various factors, but also how these various factors will impact upon your um, educational technology implementation. Then there's infrastructure. Um, it's always, again, something that needs to be considered and explored. Um, the broadband con connectivity that might be required, the devices that might be required, the technical support that might be required and a range of similar factors that need to be considered in terms of the success of your transformation planning. So have a look at those various elements and then come to the, to, to, to the tutorial with some ideas, particularly about the staging of these different elements in your transformation planning and how your educational technology will impact upon these various factors. Now, the next reading relates to the idea that our transformation plans can affect different scopes. And we're taking it to the extreme case um, where we're looking at country studies, um, how transformation can affect an entire society and whole economies. Uh, now, many of you are looking at smaller scoped um, environments, such as what's happening within a particular um, organization, uh, say in, um, a school or university or um, a language learning um, organization. But some of you are looking at a national perspective and it's important to see how these transformation processes can affect things beyond just um, specific organizations. And indeed they can affect beyond just specific countries. Um, what occurs in, a, in one country, particularly if it's successful, um, will have an impact upon other countries. So in this particular document, look at chapters one and two, which go through and explore the different elements of um, how ICT policies can transform um, large scale organizations and countries, and then pick one of the countries and explore that in a little bit more depth. So this reading in particular looks at how mass mass systems can affect whole elements within society and economies and organizational processes. Um, but it does then also give you ideas, even if you're looking at a smaller scale, how the introduction of your educational technology may affect the community. It might even affect the economy. New industries might be able to be developed within the local community as a result of what's occurring within your educational organization. So there are elements that can be explored regardless of scale. It also looks at a range of different aspects of education, starting from basic level education through to more complex knowledge acquisition, through to knowledge deepening, through to knowledge creation. And it does that in a range of different areas. Um, to the policies, professional development, pedagogy, and a number of others. But looking at how these impact upon uh, the base level education, say learning numeracy and literacy, making sure that that is occurring. Then you've got knowledge acquisition, which tends to be a little bit more complex, um, but often relies upon, is often measured through um, external examinations or uh, metrics comparing countries or comparing schools. Um, that sort of measure the ability of students to acquire knowledge. 
then you've got students being able to use this knowledge in deeper ways, uh, particularly around real world context and project based learning um, examples, but taking what students know and being able to apply that in more complex ways. And then sort of at the final level is knowledge creation, being able to create new knowledge, being a really dynamic, engaged um, environment. Say if you've got a um, one example would have been some of the schools here that have been using electronic books and exploring ways of teaching and learning through the use of electronic books in, that were quite new and innovative. And so they were then able to share what was being done within the school with other organizations and other schools and teachers um, in terms of how they went about um, learning. And it may be from, yeah, it can be done at a whole range of different levels, but it's, it's about doing things new and innovatively and creating something. But beyond just policies, professional development and pedagogy, there's also the curriculum, how that may change, the assessment processes, how schools and educational organizations are organized, and then there's the ICT use within those. So a whole range of different factors that you can be considering in looking at your educational transformation planning and how you want to progress your organization from just focusing on the base level education through to ideally being a transformative, creative organization that's doing things new and leading the world in ways of supporting um, learning so look at those and then again, look at the country studies that explore how different countries have approached um, these various aspects. And the countries in this particular um, study are Singapore, Uruguay, Jordan, Namibia and Rwanda. So relatively different um, countries that have different uh, demographics and different engagements with, with technology, different engagements with um, education and schooling. Um, but look at how they have approached things in different ways. And then we'll come together in the tutorial and explore how um, various policies have impacted upon ICT use in these different countries. And in Teams, I'd like you to share two ideas around ICT use that you've experienced, you've had some experience with, that could be applied to developing countries and how that might affect some of those various factors that these readings have explored. Okay, now the next two readings relate to creating a vision of what you want to see achieved through your transformation planning. So the last two looked at a whole range of different things that could be achieved. Now you need to articulate what you want to achieve for your organization. And that's generally called a vision. Um, and there's a number of approaches for achieving these vision statements. And the first reading, looking at the visioning, visioning process for designing responsive schools, um, looks at why we set goals and visions, um, being a, a sound basis for planning, so we know where we are and where we want to go to. Um, it can help clarify some of the problems and issues within an organization, but also sometimes some of the opportunities that may exist that aren't being capitalized upon. By involving the community of the organization, and indeed sometimes the wider community, in the visioning process, it can gain support for the organization. It can tend to lead towards positive action, um, being seen as being responsive and trying to progress forward. It can help lead towards creative problem solving, coming up with new ways of going forward. And particularly when it's based upon and involve the community, it can draw upon community resources um, to achieve goals beyond what we thought initially the organization might be capable of doing by itself. Um, so there are a range of different processes that can be supported by goal setting and vision setting. But they can also support your evaluation processes. In order to effectively evaluate how your transformation planning is going, you need to set out what you want to achieve. And then as we'll see in later weeks, we need to set in place some measurements of those processes to be able to make informed evaluation decisions. 
but it can also help to promote our human resource development. Um, if you've set out a vision of what needs to be achieved and the staffing in the organization doesn't necessarily um, have what's needed to achieve that, then there may be um, justifications for hiring new people with particular skill sets or developing some um, existing staff so that they can achieve various elements of that visioning. It's also the need to ensure that you're encompassing everyone within the organization, all the stakeholders, in terms of meeting their needs. Yes, you'll have your own particular perspective and needs, and particularly organizational management often has particular perspectives and needs, but there are generally a wide range of different needs within an organization, um, from minority groups to disadvantaged groups to particular populations within your organizations. Students is often an important one, but parents are, are often neglected area. Teachers are sometimes neglected. So there can be a whole range of different aspects, but then there's also support staff and a whole range of other elements within an organization that you need to make sure that your transformation is incorporated and visioning can be part of that process. It can also clarify the long-term value for participants for being involved in the organization. Um, so they can see really good outcomes being achieved and can get behind supporting the organization in achieving that. And it can also just be seen as a, long, a good investment. Um, by setting out these long-term goals, it's much more likely that they'll be achieved and that's always gonna be a benefit to the organization. And that participatory process that this particular document um, focuses on can really involve the community and um, ensure that the community is supportive of what the organization is trying to achieve. Okay, so four key aspects of setting visions or goals. Preserving what you want to keep, so not throwing everything out and starting something new. There's going to be elements that you want to make sure are retained in your organization. Then there's going to be some things you want to make sure you add, some things you want to contribute um, to including, but there might be some things that you want to remove, some things that the organization currently does or has that needs to be taken away of course, it's not serving the overall aims and, and goals of the organization. And then there may be some things you don't want to add. You want to ensure that aren't included. Um, technology can provide a lot of power for analyzing what students are doing and helping support their learning processes. But applying those same technologies to staff to monitor their performance and um, observe what they're doing and uh, might be seen as something that's negative and not something that wants to be included within your organization. Now there's various ways of trying to achieve this and a participatory process is, um, can be very supportive of creating a vision. Now for your transformation plan, because you have to set the vision um, before you can really engage with your community and you won't necessarily have a, a means of doing so. But in real life, um, transformation planning, having your organization involved at the very start around setting the vision for the transformation can be very, very powerful. And we're going to talk again in later weeks about this. But the charrette process is one way of engaging with the community, not just of the organization, but also the external community, all the stakeholders that are going to be involved and identifying the problems that can be addressed, having everyone involved in that process looking to include professionals from within the organization, but also from without, to provide professional advice about what can be achieved, setting short, medium and long-term goals, and having a commitment to put the recommendations of the charrette process into practice as part of the transformation planning. So the next and final document for this week um, is looks again at a sort of a summary of these processes for setting your vision and achieving a visioning process. So read through this document. Again, it looks at the different aspects of what is included in a vision statement and the benefits of creating vision statements. In the tutorial, I'd like you to share the statements, the draft statements that you've prepared, and we will discuss those and look at what might be 
uh, modified, how they might be expanded, or some aspects that may not be necessary or um, need to be focused on, so that you can improve your vision statements towards your portfolio submission. And then in tutorial, we're going to discuss these vision statements for your organization and how you can try to achieve some of these bigger outcomes that we explored in the first two readings this week towards having a much better organization as a result of your transformation planning processes. So that's it for this week. And I look forward to seeing you in the tutorial.